Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and crafter here on YouTube. I almost call this the tutorial no one should try. Stay tuned to find out why. Sometimes there's just ideas that go wrong, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. This cute stamp, and it's called Crafter's Heart from Trinity, and it's absolutely adorable. It has all kinds of crafty things in it to make up the heart. However, it, I wanted to color it with my Copics, and there's no Copic markers in the drawing. So I decided to try something a little different. It, it's really small for watercoloring. All these little tiny shapes. I considered colored pencil but I felt like doing something a little unique. And I got out a really crappy brush and this little dish that I put a red, yellow, and blue from my Copic reinkers in. And I tried to pick something that looked like a cool color for each one of those. You know, if you've taken my Copic Jumpstart class, you'll know the challenge of figuring that out. But nonetheless, I just thought I'd try mixing some colors out of three of these and just use my little dish to do that. And I know of course that I can take some red and mix it with yellow to create a warm yellow or an orangey color to make shadows. And then each one of them around this little wheel, I can mix colors in between them. So I can take some yellow and mix it with the blue in order to make a green, etc. throughout the whole little color wheel. And each color, each shade of green can be adapted by putting in more blue to make it more of a blue green or more yellow to make it more of a yellow green, etc., etc. Now, the reason that I say you probably don't want to do this is that my inks dried out really quickly in this little bowl. So I was constantly adding more to each of the little puddles that I was mixing. I have the colorless blender in the center that's acting a little bit like water. So this part did work. I started just dipping my brush into the colorless blender to get it lighter and lighter and get a little bit of a transition of color on the little swatch thing there. And I can do the same kind of a thing for the red in the heart. Just start adding more of the colorless blender and not as much of the red color on my brush. Now the, the brush is an old icky one. It's like not even a brand I could find online really. I don't even know what it is. It's just one that I had in my stash and I was willing to part with it because this is alcohol ink. Do not use your watercolor brushes with alcohol inks. I mean, you might be able to, but I wouldn't trust that the bristles will stay in or anything because who knows what the alcohol is gonna do. But you know, it was a fun experiment to try and to play along with. So here I wanted to mix some neutrals. And when you mix neutrals in watercolor or here in Copic, you just add a little bit of the yellow, the red, and the blue together in different proportions. And so if you come up with one proportion, it will make more of a brown color. If you add a little bit more of other colors, you can make something that looks a little more gray etc. So I just kind of played around with it and it was hard to make it happen and then the color would dry out and then I had to add more colorless blender and I think this was a really expensive way to paint this stamp like really ridiculous. However one of the reasons that I did it on watercolor paper is because I tried it first on just regular Nina and it bled like crazy because I was using all this colorless blender and it was really wet. And you know how markers tend to want to bleed? This totally wanted to bleed. So there you go. If you're trying to paint into something like that, this won't work. I've done some other videos in the past doing like watercolor technique type stuff with Copic reinkers, but those were more of like, let's get a splashy background going as opposed to let's paint in tiny images. So that's just a totally different way of thinking than trying to create colors that I can do little tiny things with. I did find I could mix a really dark color by mixing my blue and my red really thickly, not a whole lot of colorless blender, so I could make something that simulated 
black caps on the little paint bottles and that sort of thing and then put more blender in it to make it a gray to paint some other things but yeah this is probably not a technique you'll use you might want the stamp so I decided I would show this to you anyway the sentiments in it are really sweet I stamped this one and then cut it out and made banner edges out of it I have dimensional adhesive under two sides of it so it just kind of wraps across there and then I added glossy accents onto all the little bits and pieces. I did fussy cut out the heart and since it was fussy cut out like imperfectly because I'm not a perfect fussy cutter I put it on a watercolor paper base so that it matches the base and then you don't really notice too much if I've got little wobbly edges. But the glossy accents I think totally made the card. I think that worked really well after my craziness of trying to paint this with reinkers. You could probably already also try this with maybe some alcohol inks. I don't know if, if that would work any better. You could try it and see. I would probably get out pencils to color this one because Copic markers, yeah, there's no Copic in the picture. So you got to use something else, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's a rule or not. Anyway, leave a comment in the doobly-doo. Tell me if you think you'd ever try this or if I was just being really silly and I'll see you again soon.